Welcome back to Seems Logic Garage. Today we're going to go through how easy the DCT swap can be using our wiring service. Um, the DCT swap using the HDG GCU is kind of hard to do if you want to do the wiring yourself. Um, it's kind of risky with how expensive these transmissions are and how easy the mechatronics unit is to ruin. Um, by using our wiring service, the hard and risky part is taken care of. All you need to do is remove the mechatronics for us and then we're going to do all the modifications and the wiring and then ship it back to you. Um, then all you need to do is kind of carefully put pins in the right hole and you're, you're ready to roll. Um, that rhymed. Uh, so let, let's go through uh, what it takes to remove the mechatronics from the uh, transmission. Um, it's just going to be a couple simple steps with some Torx drivers and some snippers. And uh, you can do this at home. Um, all you need to do is take your time, mark the wires they need to mark, and uh, just that's it really. The first thing you want to do is drain the transmission of fluid. Um, there is a lot of fluid in these, so it's always good to kind of drain it in a controlled manner first versus opening up and have it all wash on your garage floor because it is not nice to clean up. It's a lot like gear oil. It's not like an ATF really. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is remove this little tin foil thing. Um, it's not really needed in most aftermarket applications. And there's different ones for different model transmissions. The one we're working on right now is an F80 M4 transmission, but these instructions are going to be generic for every type of BMW DCT transmission. Um, they're all essentially the same outside of the bell housing, which is like the bulk pattern of the front and the gear ratios inside. Um, there's a short ratio option and a long ratio option. Take two to my finding my right Torx bit. Next, we're going to take a T30 and remove all these side cover bolts. You can usually just get rid of these, the foil mounting things. Don't worry about it. All right. Now we can see the mechatronics here. First thing we're going to want to do is remove the board and then we'll alter the wiring. Okay, so the first step to removing the mechatronics board is to pull up this white clip right here. All right, it's popped up. Push this tab down and pull out the harness. This is called the main connector. Next we can pop this piece out to let the wires get a little bit free. All right, let that piece of plastic fly wherever it goes and uh, kind of put your wires away. Once the wires are pushed away, we're gonna wanna remove first all of the, not remove, but loosen all of the sensor fasteners so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Down there, this is the an RPM sensor, and then eight over here. They're all retained screws, so we're gonna leave them where they are, but we're just gonna make sure they're not threaded into the transmission at all anymore. Okay. Now while the sensor uh, retaining screws are loosened, we can go ahead and remove the um, board screws which hold the mechatronics board to the transmission. The first is gonna be right here. The second, right next to it. The third. and the fourth and last one. Now the mechatronics is loose, but it is being located on these two pins, which make it kind of difficult to remove sometimes. Uh, what I like to do first, is just to see how it is, is give it a little wiggle, and then gently pry it up. Um, really don't put too much pressure. You're just trying to walk it up the pins, essentially. Um, once it gets moving enough, you can just easily remove it. Okay, we have the mechatronics out. Um, this is, I'll give a little breakdown of what each piece is. These are two pressure sensors. These are the solenoid 
um, power plugs. These are shift fork position sensors. This is RPM sensor. And then in the front, you have a temperature and RPM sensor. Um, and these are all the solenoids. The shift forks are under here, which will go back and forth. And uh, yeah, so basically you can just brake clean this off so it's not, you know, so soupy um, and put it in a box to ship to us. And then we're gonna take a few more things out and add it to that box before uh, we're done here today. One thing to note is to make sure to keep these O-rings. Um, sometimes they fall out and you just wanna make sure you don't lose them. Um, one more thing to note is these bolts here co can come out kind of easy sometimes. You wanna just make sure this, the sleeves which retain the bolts stay in the plastic and if they're loose, just keep them with you um, so we don't, they don't get lost during shipping because oftentimes they can vibrate out kind of easily. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is cut up this clear tube a bit and remove it so we can mark the wire farther up and then uh, we'll remove this piece and ship it with the mechatronics. So we're just gonna take some scissors here. Be careful. Exactly as dangerous. This is dangerous. All right, we got the little plastic sleeve removed. Now we can uh, kind of clean off these wires so we can mark them and not have the marks just disappear instantaneously when the transmission's uh, moved around or touched or whatever. So the next thing to do is when you look closely at this connector, there are numbers above each pin. That's gonna tell you which wire is which. We wanna take four, five, and six and mark those wires. For wire four, we're gonna grab it. Follow it up to about here. Wipe it off and put one mark on it. Now, cut it right below the mark. Next will be pin five, which actually has two wires in the same pin. So we're gonna take both, both wires Do the same thing, but we're gonna mark these ones with, a t with two marks. Now they're both gonna have two marks um, because one of the wires is gonna come out with the plug and one wire is gonna go to a sensor. So we don't know which one's which yet, but either way, we only need one of them and one of them's just gonna disappear, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Again, cutting them right below the marks. Now we're gonna go back to number six. And mark this one with three marks. And for the last time, we're gonna cut right below the marks. Now, three of those wires are gonna end up going to the sensor that, that is behind the clutch basket. What marking these wires does is allow us to wire to that sensor without needing to remove the front cover or the clutch because we know which one are which based on the location of these pins. Now what we're gonna do is cut all the rest of the wires as high as we can so that we can retain as much of this pigtail as possible. After we do that, we're gonna unscrew the connector to the, the factory connector at the top of the transmission and remove everything that's not needed anymore. 
So main goal is to pull aside all those wires we need. So kind of push them to the side and then we can kind of munch through these wires over here. I'm less strong than I thought I was. <laughs> okay, now we have this. This is called the main connector. We're gonna put this with the mechatronics when we ship all this stuff to ourselves, I guess, in this case. But when you ship us your mechatronics, make sure to include this. Um, I guess now we'll grab the T30 and we'll remove the um, factory connector. I like to use a screwdriver to pry it out, just be careful. Okay, so the plug is now free except for one big thick gray wire. We're just gonna snip that gray wire as far forward as we can. Now this piece is no longer needed, it can go in the trash. Okay, so you've just completed half of the wiring service um, tasks that you need to do. Essentially, we remove the mechatronics. We're just gonna break clean this off and pack it nicely with the main connector. Um, when you ship it to us, we're gonna take it apart, wire the internals, wire to the solenoids, and provide a really nice wiring harness for you to connect you later on. So, but for now, all you need to do is uh, contact us, either order the service on the website, and then ship it in, or just shoot us an email, and we'll send you a custom invoice if you want a bunch of other stuff. Kind of just whatever you like, but um, half, halfway there. Welcome back. It's been about two weeks and you just received back the wiring kit from us. Um, this is basically what's going to be in the box. You're going to have three different little wires you're going to be soldering. You have the main connector you're going to push into the transmission. Some deep pinning tools just in case. This is the main connector which you're going to pin into the, the main connector. Obviously the mechatronics which is all the internal wiring done inside and then all the solenoid wires. We wire directly to the solenoids to achieve the strongest valve tests and then the super nice harness we make, uh, you know, all the best materials, motorsport grade, and then obviously you have the other side of all the connectors. So there's nothing else you need to buy. Um, some common things you might add, are maybe a drive shaft adapter that goes to a 1350 joint so you can do a custom drive shaft and possibly a cooling fitting. Uh, we make these parts as well and we're gonna be putting them on that customer F80 transmission. Um, so I guess the first step to putting this Megatronics back into the car is to get your laptop or get your uh, printer out and print out our, our DCT customer reference page on the official DCT wiring workbook. This is the easiest page to use to use as a reference as you pin out the connector. So there's really only three wires you need to solder and it's because we think that taking the front cover off and the clutch off to get to the front three sen sensor wires is kind of like a bit of a hassle, so that's why we marked those three wires before we took them out. Um, we're just gonna, you know, use the markings we, we made on them, and then from there, we know which wire to solder to. Um, so the first step is definitely gonna be grab your connector. Um, if it's not assembled, just assemble it with a little red Loctite. It's gonna be, you know, nice. So then definitely take a second and uh, get familiar with how the letters are laid out. Uh, you definitely wanna be comfortable with how the letters are laid out before you go and start putting pins in. It's much easier to take your time and put the pins in once than to be taking the pins in and out. Um, if you ever have a question about the letters on the back, just take a look at the front because the, the layout of the letters is actually slightly different. So it gives you insight to what isn't shown on the back. Um, this is all a mill spot connector and it doesn't leak or anything, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but the first three wires we're gonna do are the, gonna be the soldering wires. It's just nice to get those out of the way. If they're not hard to do, it's not a big deal. Um, so the first one we're going to do is going to be the, the wire marked with one mark. And that was wired to, M on the sheet it says wired to MC4 before cut, which goes to actually pin three on the connector up front. So we're going to take the blue wire and put it into pin D. Okay, so we're going to be putting it into pin D. Pin D is this one. 
you can see it kind of coming out right there. Um, if you ever have troubles with the pin getting through, I recommend just grabbing it with some pliers and gently pulling it through. Or the proper way to do it, of course I'd say the, the less proper way because this is a Sims Street Garage, and is you can use the pin tool. To use the pin tool, what you're gonna do is the red side or the colored side is gonna be the, the pin installation side. So you're gonna push the wire into the slot. Then you can slide this down and push into the connector. And that will seat the pin. So now that I have D installed, I'm gonna go up to the MC6, which is gonna be N, which is gonna be white, and pin one in the connector. So I'm just gonna pin these out and then I'm gonna slide them through and then connect them. So we have our three wires. I'm just gonna do my best to feed them through. And I'm gonna leave about this much slack. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the wires about even with these wires that I left there, strip them, and then connect them. Um, you want a little bit of slack so that when you're working with the rest of the harness, you have room to move around. We can always zip tie the looseness out of the way before we close it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those short and we'll start soldering. Don't want that falling in there. All right, so wire to MC4 would be the one that's marked one. So wire to MC4 is the blue one. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect these first. I'm just gonna give him a twist. Now, MC5 is gonna be purple, which is gonna be mark two. It's going to the one mark two. Obviously the last one can just go together. All right, now that we have these three laid out, I just spread them out a little bit so that I can get the soldering iron around to them. Grab some solder. And please don't use like a buck connector or something. It's just really hot in here, so. I like to use some high temp heat shrink. You know, just lace these guys up so they become one. And what these three wires are is a frequency input for RPM of the clutch basket and also the oil temperature of the oil being flung off the clutch basket. And interesting enough, that temperature is a little bit higher than obviously the reservoir in the, in the pan temperature. So it, but it, it reacts faster. So you get a more accurate reading of the second when the uh, clutches are being worked pretty hard. All right, so now we're just gonna throw some heat, heat shrink over these tubes. Um, obviously gonna slide down a little bit, but we'll get the lighter out, really official like. Get them shrunk on there. And I have a heat gun, but I'm doing it like you guys might do at home because this is the DIY way. I like to pinch the end, make sure it can't contact anything down the road. Good, all right, next problem. All right, so your soldering is done. See, not a big deal at all. It's just those three wires. Now the next step we're gonna do is 
install the main connector, which is this one. Now, uh, Chris, you want to come over here and look closely at this connector. I'm going to show you how to know which wire is which. Now, if you look closely here, you can see one, three, five, yada, yada, yada. All right. So, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, all the way down. Um, we're just going to look at the sheet, um, and we're going to look at the main connector sheet. So, the main connector sheet is the purple. So I like to start at one, which is gonna go into lowercase a. And you're gonna just go to, gonna go down the line here and put them in one at a time. Um, five and seven are uppercase A and uppercase B. Please don't get those confused with the lowercase. Um, there, are, there are different sets on the connector, but it is much easier just to install this now without the mechatronics in place, put this to the side, and then do the solenoid wiring last. That's the way we find to be the easiest and what we re recommend. So I'll just go ahead and start popping pins and holes. Okay, so pin one, route it through like that. Find lowercase a, boom. Pin two is gonna be uppercase Z, which is actually right above it. Fun fact. So they sort of go in order. Um, you're gonna crisscross a little bit, but for the most part, they go in a line if you read down. I don't think you put that one through though. What? Does it have to go under there? Oh, wow, you just <laughs> look at me. So we made a mistake. I didn't route the wire through the uh, transmission. So I'm gonna take the white section of the D pinner, which is the removal side. Push it in and I got the pin back out. So if you make a mistake, not a big deal. If you break a couple of those, just let me know. I can always send you more. They're a little delicate. All right, now to three. Okay, so we got some main connector already pinned out into this transmission connector. Uh, you just wanna make sure all the pins are seated and you wanna make sure all your pins are in the right spot. Is this nice to do a double check? I like to double check everything, maybe once, twice, maybe three times. You know, it's just easier now than later, so. Um, but now this is done, this is great. So, we're almost done. The next step is to grab the mechatronics. Just gonna hold the wires out a little bit so you can place the mechatronics back into the transmission without anything binding up. First, you wanna make sure your O-rings are still there. And if they're not, let us know. We have them stocked. Um, it's not a BMW part number, so they're pretty hard to get, but we have them. This is a common thing that falls out while the transmission's sitting around. Um, and I can slide this in. Just be gentle. It'll eventually seat back down. All right, there we go. So there's two pins here, one here and one here. Oh, one here, one here. So you kind of have to jiggle it around until the, the mechatronic slides down on those pins. All the solenoids will align kind of automatically. The first thing I like to do is go through and zip all the sensors tight. Um, they're all plastic mounts, so don't go too tight, but there's the, the three sensors here with two on each, the two here, and that's what we'll start with. So here we go, I'm just gonna go through and hand tighten these up. They're all like sealed with an O-ring. These are the shift fork uh, locator sensors. So these tell the GCU where the forks are, you know, whether it's completed, it's to see whether it's completed a shift or where it is, what gear it's in, where they wanna go, what do you wanna do. It's all that kind of good stuff. So all the sensor wires going to these is wired through the center of the, tra of the transmission mechatronics. Um, there's nothing you need to wire to those after. Basically this whole kit just like hot wires 
the sensors and the solenoids of the transmission to the GCU. So we're taking the control out of here and putting it with HTG. Torque spec on these is like, that's good. It's like a half a Uga. It's not that tight. It's pretty much where you want to be. It's like I said, it's just plastic. So. All right, so those are in. Next up is the black bolts that you previously took out and now forgot which ones, where they go. Um, the, diff the thing is, they're like all different lengths. So what are you to do? So if you're like me and always get mixed up, you just drop them down. I got lucky. So when you drop them down, they have about that much left, you know you're right. Like that one's good too. Wow, I'm on a roll here. Where's this next one go? Right there? Nope. Oh, right there. Good. All right. Boom. One day we should write this down. They're marked in the instructions, I believe. But, uh, yeah, you just want to, you know, you just want to make sure you get good th th thread engagement. See that neck just cinching down those solenoids? Once again, the torque spec on this is going to be about a half an Uga. You don't have to worry about anything, just don't go crazy. We're just holding this board on here. The things, the O-rings we're going on to, basically we're squeezing the mechatronics down onto that. And those are the pressure sensors for the uh, clutches. All right, so that's pretty sweet, if you ask me. So leave this unplugged for now, that way you have slack to work with, and uh, we'll start doing the solenoids. Solenoids one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, they're marked on the sheet as just like that. The first thing we're gonna do though is do the power pins, which are these two yellow wires. They go into the center of the connector. I'm gonna do this long one first. I like to get it out of the way. So I'm going to route that through and go to the far kind of hidden one because we have access to it. And we're through already. So then I'll start with solenoid one, which is marked lowercase i on the sheet. So I'm just going to scoot this through and go to lowercase i. Um, so now I guess we'll fast forward and I'm just going to go, you know, solenoid 2, solenoid 3, solenoid 4, you know, and uh, all the way down the line. Then I'm going to go go ahead and double check it all and then basically we're going to do the final assembly. Alright, so we just finished pinning out all of the solenoids, so we're basically done wiring. Um, you can see all those nice gold pins. Essentially what we're gonna do now is push this connector in all the way. It's gonna take like two thumbs worth of force. It's gonna pop in. We'll add the retaining clip later. And then we're gonna gently pull all the wires kind of out so they're not in there toward the clutch basket. Now, what I like to do first is click in this main connector. a little tough because there's wires underneath it, but there's still plenty of room. And then you just push down the little locking tab like that, and the main connector is now done. Now we can start figuring out wire routing so that we're not like flopping around. Um, the main goal is to put the cover on, the, on here without pinching any wires or stuff like that. So what I like to do is these ones that go on the top, I just route them in this crevice. and those work well. You don't want to cross over the front of the mech because they will get pinched. So the ones that are on the solenoids one through four 
and their power wire. Just root them over here. You'll be all good. There's nothing in there that's going to bother them. Okay, good boom. Next, what I like to do is get some zip ties and kind of gently just make this happen. So it's a balancing act between so tight that we can't pin out the connector and too long that we have to deal with too many wires. So you have to find a little bit of a middle point with how you're doing this. Um, we, we cut them so that we're kind of in that middle point. I'm unprepared, let me go find zip ties and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my zip tie here. And you know, we were just being very delicate with the wires because we don't want to damage any of the solders. But you know, I'm trying to pull them tight and out of the way. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna zip tie it to the factory wire kind of thing with Bob. Very scientific. Yeah, so what that means is we're, wire, we're zip tying them to the factory wiring shroud. So you don't have to make it that tight. We're just literally trying to hold it off a little bit. All right, let me show them the thing with Bob that you're talking about. It's like this plastic bridge so I'm just, you know going. thingamabob bridge yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this and then what I'll do is um, spin the zip tie out of the way it's like boom boom nice and tidy and the goal of all this basically is just to make sure that no wires are able to push back toward the clutches now that's very extreme uh, it's very hard to actually have that happen. I wouldn't necessarily like really worry about that But when we're doing a transmission for a customer, I like to make sure It's as perfect as possible because troubleshooting these is much harder than just building it right All right, so we're looking pretty good everything looks pretty tucked away nothing's really Looks like it's gonna get pinched or anything. This is a crossover wire. So the cool thing about this wire is the two power feeds come down, feed each solenoid, and then cross over and feed each other. What that does is give us a very good uh, valve test because if we just came down like this, these solenoids actually would kind of run out of power if these were running before them. So what this does is feed from both ends and gives us those really crisp valve tests, which uh, lead to a very, you know, Transmission is just happy, and we like to do that. We like happy transmissions here. We're happy people. <laughs> All right, so once again, let me go get a microfiber to clean off this gasket that you're gonna wanna clean off too. Um, do not run this gasket through a parts washer or anything. They like to expand. Um, just wipe it off, wipe off the ceiling surfaces, and then we can test fit to make sure everything fits nice, and then go ahead and tight, put the cover on, and we're one step closer to being done. They call me Mr. Poppins. Uh, one note to do before you install the transmission is put some fluid in it before you put it in the car and put it on its side, like rest it over a bit. I like to do that just to make sure that I don't have a leak in this cover because taking this cover off in the car is very hard. So, I put the, the cover on, everything's fitting nice. We're not having anything, you know, push out awkwardly. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the little Torx 30 nuts, bolts, whatever you wanna call them. Screws? Jeez, I am an engineer. They're definitely just bolts. Well, is it a bolt? No, that's a nut. A nut is what goes on yeah. the end of a bolt. I was just thinking reverse. Today was a bad morning, dude. I wish It's been a bad. long day. I had to take a shower so I smell good on camera. <laughs> There's been a lot of stuff going on this morning. So this transmission is actually going into like a endurance race car. He's gonna be using an E46 with an S54 with one of our sprung hub adapters, which uh, are very nice to the clutch baskets. Uh, no more solid hubs in really any of our kits. We're doing all sprung hubs. Uh, long term, we're seeing much better results. Uh, still the same brand from Adamat and uh, yeah, everything's going well with that. But this guy's even on the stock ECU. So with the new software, all he's gonna do is wire his throttle pedal to the GCU, and then wire the throttle, the throttle signals from the GCU back to the ECU. The ECU's not even gonna know the transmission exists, but it is going to fire off the blips and the cuts um, 
for the ECU. So it's going to be like the like a foot is blipping it, but really it's the GCU of applying the perfect amount of blipping cut, which is calculated with closed loop control. So each shift is going to have a different um, amount of blipping cut, which is nice because even on some ECUs you have like a static amount of blipping cut, which I guess you could do like a three D map for it, but it is kind of just a pain in the butt to get set up versus letting the GCU just handle it. So we're going to do the only inputs and outputs from the transmission to the ECU are the CAN to get the engine signals, which is easy. It's a preset for that S54. And then it is for the throttle in and out. So let me find my Torx 30 in here. It's probably lost. The drawer of junk. It's been a long week. We've been doing a lot of BS. Yeah, of course it's lost. <laughs> Gone forever. Uh, it's probably right over there in that toolbox. Yeah. Probably have a Torx 30. Yeah. Oh, I think I got that next thing over here. This cover has an interesting blue finish to it. The T-handle kit? It's right on the ta shipping table over there. This is like an oil pan. You just want to want to do them evenly. Torque spec, you know, just a full ugo on these. I'm going to actually in the caption below. Well, the, the torque spec doesn't matter because it's, spec. The, it's like a valve cover for BMW. The cover bottoms out before, like there's not, you're not, the torque spec isn't affecting the pinch. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, we were dealing with that on that valve cover. Basically, yeah. it just stops moving. Yeah, you're like, oh, there, there it is. So like, there's really nothing, like, as long as the bolts don't back out, you're fine. Yeah. All right, but we're done. Well, almost done, I guess. Whoops. All right, so when you... Oh, wow, camera down. All right, hey, nothing so, happened. <laughs> uh, this is the retaining ring. So all we're gonna do is slip oh, this. Come. Yeah, get back over here. We're gonna slip this over this, and then take the original fastener that held this plug in, and just tighten it up. So let me uh, find that fastener. And tighten it up. Oh. Isn't even the original fastener, but after some of these, it seems pretty long. Yeah, the, there, it is pretty long, yeah. but it's fine. We're gonna do this, like we're gonna thread this into eternity. It's weight savings. They just kept drilling out the casting. So I like to cinch this down pretty hard. This is a full 1.5 logo. This is gonna stop this from twisting. But uh, now that the retaining clip is in there, we can uh, put this transmission back in there. Oh! <laughs> oh! <clears throat> put the transmission back on its bottom. Clean it up a little bit. Ask a friend. Yeah. Spotter. Lightweight. <laughs> Maybe take the shipping labels off of it. Mike just dropped the bench press on his chest. <laughs> Someone... All right, so next thing we'll do is install the oil pressure, not oil pressure, the it's close. The oil cooler adapter. So it looks like we still have an OEM one on here. It's still leaking after Dude, these, these trend endless trend. amount of time being on its side. They hold so much fluid. You literally stood it up. It went higher in Z and now it's leaking more. Okay. Impressive. I'll never get it. This is a 13. Close enough. I think it is actually. It is a 13. <laughs> I think the bolt we provide for our cooler is a 12, just a heads up. So you will not be using the same one. So we're gonna take this out. And you just wanna make sure you get the O-rings out of there. They get old and hard. 
booty. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is take our adapter and we give you OEM O-rings. Ignore all the Red Bull, that's why I'm shaking. <laughs> Great camera movement this morning from Chris. Yeah, well I appreciate you guys all tuning in this long. You know, anybody at home can do this. We're just trying to make it as DIY as possible. Powering through Chris's shaking hands. So, Not as bad as my broken toe. No. All right, so sweet. We got the O-rings on there. We're just gonna push them down all the way. And this is like baby, baby install. It's gonna snap in there pretty good. Boom. Gonna take our little screw. And tighten that Larry down one ogre. One ogre. All right. Next up for the accessorize will be accessories. Accessorize. Accessorize. Are we going out to the club? You yeah. got your accessorize on. We gotta have the bling. So <laughs> next up is the transmission to dry shaft adapter. Basically this tripod is useless and no one can do anything with it. So we made a really nice, really nice fitting piece. Um, these are the power nubs and the power nubs go into these little indents and take a lot of the torque. Um, this is also a really tight fit on here. So if yours is really rusty, it'll probably be a little tight. Um, but you can hear it snap in. Boom, there's like literally no play. It's like the perfect fitment. These are uh, stove nuts, so they're like metal lock nuts. So this can be right by your exhaust and like the, the uh, plastic nylock BS you buy at the hardware store. It won't just like melt and turn into nothing. Fun fact, lift this up and you can spin it. All right. Boom. But at this point, maybe crack a beer. Your transmission is officially wired. All the scary boogeyman that you read about on the internet about how hard it is to do is now complete. Um, just pitting out the connector is the hardest part of this, of this whole job. When the transmission is ready to go. I recommend doing a valve test before you install the transmission. And that's simply done by using the HDG software to load the load valve test firmware and then using the logger software to then check it. Um, Basically, the only reason you're doing that is to make sure you put the pins in the right spot. But if you follow the directions, you did. No big deal at all. But uh, the transmission's ready to go in the car now. Um, basically, an adapter kit. And then you have the harness. Pin this out to basically your can and whatever inputs to outputs you would like. Um, just like maybe use the uh, manual park lock kit we have if you're more of a race car. Uh, we offer paddles that are super crisp for shifting. Also, this DCT shifter is gnarly. They're so cool. Uh, we have filters, we have water to oil coolers, we have air to oil coolers, we have billet pans that are beautiful, we have adapter plates for basically any engine combo you can think of, and we even do custom drive shafts for the guys who have all sorts of weird stuff that isn't available locally. Um, we have adapters for basically every BMW transmission and differential in the world. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you're interested in DCT or even AHP, please let us know. Um, we're doing this stuff every day and we can definitely help out with whatever project you guys can think up of. So, thanks for watching. Good luck. I hope to see your order in soon and see your mechatronics arrive. We can get your harness and mechatronics all wired up ASAP, get it back out to you, and you can get on the road to have some fun. Start your video game driving. It's like Forza. <laughs>